welcome to our Facebook Live session for, what is it, it's Thursday, July the 9th. I am Catherine, I'm the Resource Centre Manager, and today I'm joined by Odette, who is our Advice and Development Officer, Hello. and Innes, who is our Business Development Officer. Hello. So this is our second time at our new time of between four and five in the afternoon. So do remember it's a little bit later than it has been, and please do join us. So just a little bit of background information about Freud and Vision for anyone who's new, and welcome if you are new, welcome if you've uh, been with us since the beginning. Uh, Freud and Vision is a specialist charity, and we encourage independence, confidence, and growth amongst our local residents who are blind and partially sighted. And we have been supporting members for nearly 100 years. We're really excited about that. And we're passionate about assisting our members to achieve their personal goals and retain as much independence as you can. So last week, our session was on handheld technology with me. But before that, we had a little bit of a language session with David. He gave us some simple phrases in both French and Spanish. So how many of those phrases do our watchers remember? Because my language level isn't very good and I will be shown up by the two ladies <laughs> next to me who are both fluent in other languages. Um, so this week we are continuing with our theme of travel and Odette and is going to lead us in a discussion on travel and travel advice if you're visually impaired. And we're also, Innes and I are going to be talking with her about our travels and what we've enjoyed. And, so, and after that, we are going to be joined by Synergy Dance and they're going to be doing some nice warm-up stretches and showing us a few moves. And let's, I can't wait for that to happen. So please, Odette, do take it away. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, Welcome everybody to our travel and out and about uh, session, Facebook session. Um, I'm visually impaired and when I became visually impaired, I was kind of very worried that I wouldn't be able to travel anymore. I've lost my central vision, so I can't read signs, I can't read timetables, um, uh, flight information or train information. So, um, for many years, I've only travelled with my husband or my, my family or friends. I, I haven't travelled alone. And kind of recently, I ventured out alone. So, um, I wanted to share with you today a little bit of, um, I suppose, what do you do if you can't see and you want to travel? What, what are your options? And, what solutions can you bring with you? So it would be actually very nice if anybody out there watching the Facebook and who's also blind or visually impaired, and if they've travelled alone, um, have you dared it? Have you gone out into the blue yonder by yourself? So it'd be nice to know. Please do uh, type in your comments so we get a little bit of interaction with you as well and Faye's there in the corner, picking up all the comments for us. So, um, how did I do it? How, what was my, my first travel was actually because my aunt was really ill in Austria. And I, I lived in Austria for two years and stayed at her house. And I really felt that she took good care of me, she was very kind, and I really, I was kind of told she was very ill and I really, really wanted to see her. And it was at Christmas time and all the flights were booked. No way, there were no, no flights. And um, so I kind of looked at the trains, how would I get from London to Vienna? Uh, and uh, my husband was going to see his family in, in France, so I, I thought, okay, half the way I can do with him. So we flew to Geneva and I arrived at the Geneva train station and I said, innocently, could I have travel assistance to go to Vienna? And they looked at me and I had my, my long cane and uh, they said, are you traveling alone? I said, yes. And they said, oh, 
Nobody's asked that before. I thought, Geneva, an international train station, and no blind people travelling alone. So it shows actually how, I suppose in a way, how difficult it is and how, how brave you have to be to, to dare to go out there and, and travel in, a, in, in foreign countries alone as a blind person. And so I had my cane and I thought, okay, I knew a little bit of German, but not a lot. And I had to do three changes in Switzerland. And I thought, right, Swiss people speak French, they speak German, but they also speak Swiss and probably a bit of Italian. So I thought, oh, I might not understand them, they might not understand me. So I wrote up flashcards with the name of the station I wanted, the name of the next station. So I had three or four big flashcards so I could do a bit of sign language if I, <laughs> if I needed to. I had my plastic, my credit card. If worse came to the worst, I could leave the station and go to a hotel. And um, uh, I didn't have a mobile phone, so mm. that was it. I know, <laughs> Catherine, who did the technology last week, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I now know how to use a mobile phone. So next time I do it, I will have a mobile phone. And, um, and so out I went, and you know, for a whole month beforehand, I, I was really wearing. At night, I would say, so what if nobody understands me? What if I miss the train? What if, what if, what if? And, but I was so motivated because my aunt was ill. And um, having done it, I was so, and, and so I went to Geneva in the end, got on the first train, and um, I, I went to the next stop to the next station and asked the guard and they were very kind. They took me to the right platform, got on to the next plat the next train, and I found myself with a bunch of people that were doing the same journey because there were no more flights, no more flights from uh, from uh, Geneva to Vienna. And uh, my flashcards, they were fantastic, they really were came in handy. And then I was so, so glad when my cousin met me at the station. And that was about 10 years ago. And I'm so glad my aunt is still around. She, she got over her illness. But what was the most um, uh, kind of amazing thing is still, and the way I talk to you about it, I'm still so excited to have done this by myself. And I felt then that the world is my oyster. Now I can travel. Mm -hmm. I am independent. And I've got my little techniques, my little uh, safe failings um, for traveling. So one of the things I would say, I'm going to bend over to pick up a few things. My white cane. White cane is an international symbol. And most of the time, people will, will notice it and help you. They even put me in first class, Ooh. so that was good. And my magnifier, I wouldn't go anywhere without my magnifier. And I also have, and Catherine will be actually quite happy about this, a portable CCTV magnifier. I'd like to see that's a transportable CCTV a magnifier. transportable. <laughs> it is a tiny bit heavy. But it folds up like a, like a laptop, uh, oops, and also, yeah, and, and you can actually, um, and so I read maps, I read hotel menus, I read the local brochures, to, and I love also to draw and paint, so I can do that, I can do my nails, um, these are, this is my eyes, and, um, the first time it went through customs, it was really interesting, <laughs> but that's fine. But I had I had it packed properly, and uh, I've, I've taken it to to France, to to uh, I've taken it to Ireland, to Germany, to Spain. So um, so far, I haven't been arrested <laughs> for having the CCTV. And the next thing is a sharpie pen. Because if you need to make notes, 
Um, I really, I really need it in, in big and bold. So, so those are the things I take with me on holiday. And uh, now that I have a new mobile phone, I'll definitely take my phone. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to find out from you, if you've been on holiday, what are the things that you take with you? Um, maybe even, even if you're not visually impaired, there's always things you take with you on holiday. Um, Catherine, do you, do you want to kind of um, say what, what you yes, take? Yes, so I would always take my mobile phone, because I'm lost without my mobile phone. Um, I'd always take some form of reading material. So when I was first going on holidays, that would be real books. And my suitcase was really heavy because I would take lots of books on holiday with me. Now I tend to take a Kindle instead, and that's a lot lighter, but you can't do the same thing where you might share a book with someone else. It's very much uh, insular mm. reading. Uh, I'd usually have either on my phone or printed out a map of the area. Yeah. And I would try and at least learn a couple of phrases in the, <laughs> in the, in the language of where I was going. You'll so have I could to at least say... You'll have to ask David. Yeah, I'll have to ask David about that one. <laughs> uh, I usually try and learn please, thank you, excuse me, and some counting. So that I can... and do you speak English? Um, <laughs> Very I find, important I find if you could at least answer someone and you could say thank you in the language of the country you're in, there's a, a nice response. Yeah. I do also want to mention about customs. You can take anything that is uh, specialist equipment through customs. Just be prepared for some strange questions the first time it happens, uh, because this might be equipment that no one's ever seen before. Yeah. And how about you, Elis? Any, any, any objects or things you take when you go on holiday? Well, yes. I mean, very simple things. A mobile phone, of course, is a must these days. Yeah. We cannot live without, without them. Uh, for me, I take to, uh, tend to take books, uh, paper books. I mean, mm -hmm. I love the old-fashioned sort of paper yeah. books. I never go away for too long, therefore one or two books will, uh, will be sufficient for me. But also, I do like to take a notebook with pens to write, to write thoughts, to write notes, to the sketches. I also love drawing, like yourself. Oh, okay. So I like to just sort of keep a few thoughts, a bit of memory of everything that mm -hmm. I'm doing through that journey. Um, I love to do research up front to make the most yeah. of that holiday, so yeah. I love art and visiting museums, therefore what I will do when I go to a new city is think about my schedule ahead of time to make sure I can go to as many museums and art galleries as possible and th th that takes a lot of time you know, once you're there to try and explore. So I prepare, which I know can be a bit, you know, boring for some people. Well, I say that's part of the holiday. I do that research and finding out what, what you can do. Yeah, it's interesting because some people love to go on holiday and just get lost, you know, and yes. just don't, don't plan anything. So I, I'm a bit of a planner. I like planning, mm -hmm. but yeah, you need to allow a little bit of time here and there for improvisation. So, yeah. um, so that's it, uh, that's how I, I do my, my holidays. Faye, have we got any comments from anybody about what yeah, we so, on holiday? So David, he won't go anywhere about his phone. <laughs> he's travelled travelled to New Zealand. Wow. wow. Um, and Maxine, she's been to Canada on her own. Um, the first time she found it very scary yeah. because she couldn't find the assistance to departure. But when she arrived at the gate, she was given a wheelchair, even though she explained that it was visual impairment and she didn't need one. But Hey, she was put into her room to wait for her flight and luckily she got into the plane and then the second time was a lot easier and she was asked if she needed help and they were a bit more helpful the second time around. We've got some tra travellers among us. Fantastic. Now, yes, this is something that some, some of you might not know. If you go to any airports, there's always um, a, 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 a kind of an assistance service for people who need it any disabilities or if you find it very hard to walk through the long corridors of the airports. As, um, as Maxine said, they do tend to turn up with a, with a kind of a wheelchair, <laughs> which, is, which is kind of sometimes a little bit off-putting. Um, but if they come with a little buggy and they kind of ferry you around, that's actually quite fun. Um, but it's always worth, it's always worth uh, booking in advance. 
and uh, sometimes I would nearly say it's worth actually travelling with a few other disabled people because then you learn the, the tricks of, of how to travel. And um, I, now Ines, you said you like a, a kind of cultural and museum holidays. Um, uh, Kathleen, you said books, you like reading books. Yeah, I, if, when I go away on holiday I like to relax, so quite often it's a lay somewhere and read a book. So yeah. on one of my recent holidays I read I think about eight books in wow. four days. But I wasn't doing much else, else than laying by a pool, turning every now and then and reading my book. Now if you are a, a book reader, um, remember there's audio books. Yeah. You can get audio books from the RNIB, from Calibre, even your local um, library will have audio books. And they're quite nice because they're usually read by actors and they put the drama in their voices. And they're, they're fun books to uh, bring with you on holiday. Now, another, another let's, let's hear maybe from our viewers. Faye, any comments on, on what kind of holidays people like to do? Do you like to, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an active person. I like to do sports. <laughs> And uh, I've been on holiday with Metro Blind Sport and we were helped by Sea Able. So there are a few travel agencies, travel f sort of companies that help disabled people to go on holiday. So some help um, kind of all kinds of disabilities and others are specific, specialised in, in blind and visual impairment. So there's Vocalize as a, as a company and Seable. And uh, we have uh, information if you, if, you, if you want their contact. And they go all around the world. They go to India, to Peru, to Africa, to Europe, and uh, so to, to even to even England. But Seable is quite interesting because you can be a little group of you and decide four of you or six of you and decide look we're all visually impaired we'd like to go to spain and we'd love to do some tandem riding and swimming mm -hmm. and they you can kind of tailor your your holiday with them so with with sea able i went to sicily with metro blind sport and for the first time in my life i did scuba diving i did wow. windsurfing we walked up the volcano <laughs> And we went to a disco and we sampled some lovely Italian food. And they had a mini bus, they ferried us around, we had um, interpreters, they would read the menu for us. So we had a, a fantastic holiday. And without that help, I, I, wouldn't, have it able, I wouldn't have been able to, to enjoy all that. Now, these holidays, these assistive holidays, they are more expensive. So you might say to yourself, well, instead of having a cheap holiday every year, I'll have an expensive one every two years. But at least you do go on holiday. And it is, it is quite amazing to uh, smell different smells, eat different food, hear different <laughs> sounds. And, and then when you hear audio books and they talk about these countries, you say, ah, have been there and it makes more sense actually so um yeah let's let's hear maybe from Kathleen or Ines any any traveling experiences that you'd like to share with us um, so I think my, my my biggest holiday I've been on was two years ago I went to India for a fortnight um, it was arranged by girl guiding we went as a group of adults we didn't take any girls with us because we thought India might be a little bit more challenging for, for te even teenagers. And it was really well organised up front. As a group, we sort of decided where we were looking to go. We stayed up in the mountains to begin with, which was a really nice start because it was just a quiet, gentle start. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of our time was spent doing a few more of the uh, of cultural things. So when we were up in Kashmir, we were taken to a rug factory where they showed us how they knotted the rugs. Um, and later on, we did the Golden Triangle, which is the Taj Mahal, Delhi, which is in Delhi, Jaipur, 
and the ag four to Agra. So I had to remember which three they were. <laughs> um, and just that week, those two weeks, it was such a different experience to anywhere I'd been. The traffic, even the sounds and the smells, and it was. It's different than going to Europe, where most of my other holidays have been. Mm -hmm. And in this, how about yourself? Any big travel that you've done? Well, not as big as uh, what Catherine just indicated. Um, uh, I tend to go away for maybe maximum four or five days, but mm -hmm. still big for me in the mm -hmm. sense that I, li I love cities, as I mentioned a moment ago. I would say I remember very uh, fondly New York. Mm -hmm. I love New York the museums, the people, the bars, the dynamism, the activity. I, I just loved it. It's really life enhancing. I would love to go back anytime yeah. soon. Although I know at the moment travel to, to and from the US might be slightly more complicated than Europe. Um, but also within Europe, I would say for me, I am very fond of Germany. I'm half German. So cities like Berlin and Munich always offer quality of life as well as great culture. So a combination of the two. Yeah. And then I've got a soft spot for Venice, I have mm. to say, oh, Venice is super yes. romantic. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and of course, um, yeah, and every two years uh, there's a Venice Biennale, which I would recommend it to everybody. There's two biennials, one for arts and one for architecture. Fantastic. So they take it in turns. Um, there's been a slight delay at the moment due to the uh, virus, yeah. but still, you know, worth uh, visiting but in, 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 the, in the next few years when they go live again because you can get to see a lot and interact with cultures from all over the world coming together for a period of time. So almost you feel that you're landing in Venice but you're having this amazing experience of interacting uh, cross cultures. So you feel you're being Fantastic. in different places at the same time. Now, if, if you are, if you are, if you do enjoy museums, uh, museums do offer touch tours and yeah. audio described tours, even in uh, in in foreign countries. Um, what I didn't. I didn't experience a touch tour in a foreign country. I would put, I would, they would take the sort of regular headphones that they give you and put and ask them, they ask you what, what language you want it in, and you say your language. And sometimes it's really difficult to, to see, like if you have to punch numbers, number 10, number 13, you, you don't see where the numbers. So for that, it's good to have maybe somebody sighted. But equally, I have asked the guard of the, in different rooms, they often have a particular guard, and ask them for the number of this room. Mm -hmm. uh, so that can help. Um, the Louvre have a touch tour of, of sculptures in Paris. Uh, here, Tate Britain, Tate Modern, they have a touch tours and audio descriptions. Mm -hmm. So um, it's well worth asking, finding out in advance what there is for, for disabled customers in, in the various museums if you don't have anybody with you to, to help you access the, the art, whether it be by description or, or through touch. Often if you're touching sculptures, they'll give you gloves because the sweat of your hand might, be, might sort of ruin and uh, sort of uh, uh, affect the sculpture. And, and I th but if they're copies, I think they let you touch them. But that you have to find out at the museum itself. That's correct. I mean, and this is an opportunity for you guys in the audience to think about any future trips you may want to do. And if you want to sort of engage in, in sort of conversation with us, feel free to reach out at any time and we can brainstorm ideas about future destinations. And we can give you guidance and support on or who to ask, where, where to go for further information, Absolutely. whether it's about the actual travel itself. Or once you get to the destination, uh, again, as uh, Dad was saying, if you want to go to a museum, we can we can give you some advice and some some contacts. Or if you want to do something completely different, like try a new restaurant or a sporting <laughs> activity, yeah. it's, if we one of us we highly yeah. likely that we've yes. had that kind of experience, or we can find out for you, so we can keep this conversation going, and we can still start thinking about our holidays yeah. as we enter the new, the new normal or the new now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've just got enough time to go to any comments that we have um, from the members, and then we will be moving on to our next section. Yes, we've got loads of comments. Oh, 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 yes. Yes. Here. So Maxi likes to be on the beach doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm with you, Maxi. <laughs> so Cetus, he says, depending on, depending on the destination, 
Um, I like visiting places about the culture of the city or the town. And Luxembourg was the last place. Ooh, Ooh. Nice. Um, nice. Very eye-catching sites and then lots of family trips as well. Um, Anna, she liked a lot of boat trips. So she said that they were very helpful when she went on a boat trip. Jim was very, very prepared. He <laughs> took his tablet, the book, his mobile, his notebook, his pen, yeah. his money, six months <laughs> on his passport, yes. and layers for the sun. And he said, minimum clothing for the hot weather. <laughs> yeah. So he goes to hot countries. Yeah. 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 Jennifer's also a big fan of New York. And then Maxine says again that she's not been to the USA, but Barbados. So, I mean, oh. uh, she's, <laughs> she's better, can go on for a long time. Oh, Rob, Robert, Bob's popped up. <laughs> he it. says, is travelling to Bedford Hall enough? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> more than <laughs> enough. <laughs> So they're, they're very, they've been, they have a really good reputation amongst the, the vision impaired community. There we go. I've done really really again for the time, guys. So do remember, if you want any of those details, you can contact Odette here at Grow the Vision, and she will be more than happy to help you with uh, getting in contact with Travelize or Seeable. I think from what I heard, Seeable is a little bit more active, and Travelize is a little bit more organised, so depending on the type of holiday you need. So you're just going to get me a little bit closer to the camera whilst I pop you on the Be Right Back soon and I let Synergy Dance in.